Welcome to church. I am so pumped that you are here. If you're brand new, my name is Chris Pasek, lead pastor of Unite Community Church, and we are in a fun season. Um, if you're watching this uh, live, uh, well, we kind of pre-recorded it, but the point is, like, when it's released, man, in two weeks, two weeks, we have our Vision Sunday. It's the Friday before Father's Day. Man, I would love to invite you to come. If you want to know where God's leading our church, what our church's next steps are, man, I'm begging you, do whatever you can to make sure you're there. Okay, it's going to be at 7 o'clock, June 17th, two days before Father's Day. It's going to be down in our Wyandotte location, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, even if you have to drive, it will be worth your time because we're going to kind of pull back the curtain and God is up some, to some really, really neat things at UCC. All right. And so I want to ask you, come, 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 do whatever you can to get there. All right. Now, if you will bow your heads, we're going to dive in today, but we're going to start with prayer. Jesus, God, thank you so much for everything you've given us. God, for uh, just your love and your devotion, but mostly Jesus. God, thank you for giving your son to us. And so, God, as we dive into what your word has for us today, God, I pray that we'd have open hearts, we'd have clear minds, and we'd have eyes to see your grace and your love and the fact that you want the very best for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're in the middle of this series called Multiply. And the big idea of this whole entire series is that this. When you meet Jesus, when I meet Jesus, it changes how you live. In fact, God's Spirit multiplies in your life and touches every area, every relationship, and every aspect of your life. And our guiding compass for this has been the book of Colossians. For the past few months and the past few series, we've just been walking through this book of the Bible verse by verse, just right from beginning to end. All right, and today, where we're landing, okay, where this book of the Bible has us is we're talking about parents, all right? Now, now, not just like if you're a parent, how to parent, but the fact we all have parents, right? And one thought that I want you to think about is simply this, all right, is who you are, okay? Like think about your likes and dislikes. Think about your body shape. Think about your temperament, okay? Think about how you fight or how you argue with your spouse, okay? Reality is, okay, is that your parents are in you and you are a part of your parents. Let me kind of explain, okay? Because we, this became so obvious to me when I gave my kid the finger the other day. Now, now hang on, hang on, because, because it's not the finger like you're thinking, all right? Like, like it's not like, bam, number one, your kid. Like, that's, that, that's terrible. If you do that to your kid, stop it, okay? But it's literally, it was my mom's finger, okay? Because growing up, okay, my mom had the mom look. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's like when you know you're in trouble, but then my mom would, would ratchet it up to where, like, she had her mom voice, she had her mom's stature, and that's when I was like, I'm in trouble. But look, when she like took her finger and it was like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's when it was like, oh, oh, like, like it's not just trouble, like dad's coming, I'm dead, right? And the other day, right, I, I was sitting there disciplining Elijah, and, and I don't, like I said, he's my oldest son, and I remember I was, he was irritating me, and next thing you know, I like gave him that finger. And it was like in that moment where as words were coming out of my mouth, sure, the, yes, they were coming out of my mouth, but I saw the finger and I was like, no, no, right? Because growing up, I remember being so mad at my mom. I'd be like, look, look, that finger, oh, it made me so mad that I was like, when I have kids, I will never give my kids my mom's finger. And then guess what? As you know it, well, here I am giving my kid my mom's finger. Why? Because, look, my parents are in me. Your parents are in you. And who we are, right, whether you want to believe it or not, for good, for bad, for ugly, okay, like, we were affected by our parents. In fact, in fact, there are three scripts that we live out in our lives, and all of them are affected by our parents. 
Okay, where number one is the first script is this, is the uh, psychologists call a replicative script. Okay, and this basically is when you replicate your parents' lives. Okay, so some of us had great relationships with our parents. Some of us idolized our parents. Some of us are like, man, I loved this so much about our childhood. Maybe it was a vacation. Maybe it was how you had dinner. Maybe it was how mom and dad interacted, okay? Maybe it was simply what their decisions were with the TV. But the bottom line is, is that you will find yourself living like your parents, replicating the things that you saw and the things that they did, right? It's like you might eat dinner the way you eat dinner because, well, that's how your parents had dinner. Maybe it's with the wet towel. You do with the wet towel what you watched mom or dad do with the wet towel. Maybe that causes some marital conflict. I don't know, right? But the bottom line is, right, is that there's one way of, as our parents affect us so much that we tend to replicate some things in our lives. And they're not always good things, but we it's replicative scripts, okay? And then there's the second type, and this is what the, uh, they call corrective scripts. Okay, so, so, yes, there are some things our parents did, and yes, they affect us so much that yes, we just do what they do. But then there are other things that they've done or that we've seen them done, right? Like my little finger, right? That you're like, I will never. And what you do, you correct the course of action. Okay, it's, it's like you didn't like what they did. You didn't agree with what they did. And therefore, now you're living your life in response to how they were, but you correct the behavior is like this, it's like this, it's like smoking with my dad, okay? Like I hated, hated my dad smoking. Like the worst, okay, was in the middle of winter when he would smoke in the truck and we'd be driving to hockey practice and the windows would all be up, he'd flip the defrosters on and then I knew here came the cigarette and I'd be like, oh, oh, could you just open a window? And then he would look at me and be like, I have the defrosters on. Open yours if you need to. And I, I would hate it. Oh my gosh. Like I grew up hating, hating cigarettes. So much so, okay, that as we were skateboarding or rollerblading later on in life, right? Like my friends would find cigarette butts and it was like, let's be cool. Let's smoke. And I was like, oh, gross. Let me tell you about my dad's smoking habit. You, you know what I mean? Like, like I would correct the behavior. And so therefore my whole life, because of what I experienced that was negative, okay, I corrected the behavior. I don't struggle with smoking. I don't smoke myself. Like there is nothing appealing, attractive, or sexy, or cool about smoking. Does that make sense? And so there's this corrective behavior. And then there's a third one, okay, and it's called improvised scripts, right? This is the part of our lives where, believe it or not, is still influenced by our parents or our upbringing, but... We're dealing with new situations that our parent we didn't see our parents deal with, right? It's like this, like my parents, like I grew up in the technology age, right? Like, like we went from no computer to like home computer to now we have computers in our pockets we call phones, right? Which, which that's a whole nother thing, but it makes no sense we call them phones. But anyway, I digress, okay? But the point is, is that my parents, okay? Like they didn't know what to do with technology. So I remember our very first home computer, think about this, our desktop, our very first de desktop, my parents put it in the bedroom of their teenage boy. Okay, think about that. Like, like was that a smart choice? No. Was that a wise choice? No. Okay, they didn't know. They couldn't look to their parents, right? They didn't know, like, hey, here's how my parents handled technology. This is how I will. And therefore, my parents, in all their wisdom and all their innocence, took a computer and put it in the bedroom of a teenager. You could imagine the problems that that caused, okay? But they didn't know, right? Right? And the reality is, okay, is wherever you fall on that map, okay, is that we are living the scripts of our lives, based on the things that we've saw, the things that we've seen, the things that we have come into our lives, good, bad, ugly, it's all affecting us. Why? Because we are our parents to one degree or another, and our parents are in us whether we like to believe it or not. And then with that thought, 
I'm going to introduce to you our one verse that we're going to tackle in Colossians today. Okay, where Paul looks at you and looks at me. And last week he talks about marriage. He talks about how it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, how those work together. You can go back last week and check that out. But then the very next verse he says this, Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Now time out, okay? Bye. Raise the hands, okay? And I know you're on a screen, so just play with me, all right? How many of us have parents? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, yeah. Yeah, look, look. All of us have parents. Okay, now, now, like we've said, maybe that relationship's bad. Maybe that relationship is disjointed. Maybe that relationship doesn't even exist. But the reality is that we all, like you can't exist without a parent. Now, what do we do with this text? Okay, because what happens, okay, is that we can either skim it and skip it. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, that, I got that. Or we can go, well, that's for the kids. You know what I mean? Like, children, obey your parents. That's, that's for the kids. Or we can leverage this text and say, well, hold on. If we are all children to someone, if we all have parents, if most of us, are going to be parents one day, what does the Bible say about how we should interact with our parents? Because in this text it says, hey, children, obey your parents in everything, for it pleases the Lord. He's, it's almost like he's saying, you want to make God smile? You want to make God look on your life and bless it? Then look, your parents matter. And what I want to do for the next couple minutes is dive into how do we in our messy world, how do we, when we have parents that, that weren't so good, others have had awesome, how are we to interact with our parents? Okay, because yes, there's the concept of obedience, but what I want to do is open our Bibles because the Bibles lift that to not just obey, but the Bible lifts our relationship with our parents to the point of honor. Or again, if you know your Bible at all, Okay, and even you do, really be honest, you don't have to know your Bible to understand this stuff. Okay, but we have what we know as the Big Ten, the Ten Commandments, right? And God thought that this was so important that we get our relationship right with our parents, that He even embedded a commandment inside of the Ten Commandments about our parents, right? And what does it read? And this is what I want to talk about today because it's not just obey, but Exodus 20, 12, it says this, honor your father and mother. Now think about that. So if, if in one text, the Bible's saying obey, we have another text that's like the 10 commandments, pretty big deal. Okay. It's saying honor. Okay. Why would God be saying all this? Because one, he's saying, look, God's going to smile. That's Colossians. But what's crazy is that if you go to the Old Testament and the 10 commandments, Look, thou shalt not kill. Got that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Got that. But honor your father and mother is the only commandment with a promise. And it's not just God will smile. Well, check this out. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. That's what scripture says. Watch this. Here's the promise. So that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on this earth. Now put this together, okay? Because the Bible is speaking into what I believe is one of the closest, if not the most personal relationships we have on planet Earth. And again, I'm not saying your parents were perfect. I'm not even saying that they were good people. But what I'm saying is that your parents, like it or not, they're in you and a part of you, for good or for bad, right? And you are a part of your parents. And see, that messes us up. You know, again, again, if great parents, you're amening, you're like, high five, let's get into this. Others, this is cringing to you. In fact, you may be tempted to be flipping this off right now because you're going, I didn't, I didn't show up, this, I showed up to the church to learn about God. Mom and dad's out. But hold on, hold on, here's why I like to argue. How you treat mom and dad is going to be a direct reflection of how you treat God. I know that might seem crazy. But that's what I want to talk about today because look at this is a commandment to honor our parents. It's a commandment 
to have some sort of obedience. What I really think is getting at is, is a relationship that's not toxic, a relationship where maybe pain is able to be healed. Okay, I don't know, you might go, I, 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 don't, I, don't, think, how do I, I don't know if I could ever get there, but that's what I wanna spend the rest of our time today talking about. How do we honor our parents, even if they're not honorable? How do we do that? And I think it comes down to three things. And if you're taking notes, I would love for you to write these down because they're things I think you could come back to. I think they apply to even other relationships in your life, okay? But I think there's three things that we can do to honor our parents. And the first thing is this, is we honor them with our words. Our words, right? And, and we kind of talk about this a lot at UCC, but our words matter. They matter a lot, right? And it's because words invoke emotion just at the sound of them, right? Like, for example, for example, when my youngest Jude was small, okay? Like, we, he, he's a talker. Like, even today, if you drive anywhere with him, he will hum, he will sing, he will talk literally from the moment you put him in a car all the way until you get to your destination, which is a lot, okay? And so, when he was younger, we used to play games with him, right? Just, just because it was like, let's interact with him, let's do this stuff. And so, uh, one day, we start playing the ABC game with him, okay? And, and it was like, literally, if you don't know what that is, I don't even know if that's the right name for it. But for us, it was like, we would give him a letter, and then we go through the alphabet, and he'd associate a letter with a word, okay? And so, we would go, letter A, and he'd yell, apple. Letter B, and he'd yell, bat, okay? Letter C, he'd yell, cat, okay? Because there was a time where him, my wife, and my other son, Elijah, came to me with a little frowny face, you got a cat, dad? And I hate cats, but I caved and said yes, and now I like my cat. So I guess Pastor P <laughs> likes cats, okay? But, but not cats, plural, I like my cat. So don't, 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 I'm not cat guy, okay? But we got to the letter D. And here's what's funny. Now you're thinking, you're going, apple, bat, Cat, like you're thinking, letter D, dog, all day long. And I'm, I'm not making this up. As fast as we said letter D, he screams out at the top of his lungs, the big D word. Okay, and now, 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 let me spell it out for you because it's probably not the one you're thinking of, but it is like D-I-C-K. Now, now, in that moment, okay, as a parent, like you're sitting there, and like you're like, like again, apple, bat, cat, boop. Like you're like, oh, like there is an emotion. Where I'm with, I'm, what has your mother been teaching you? You what, where, you know, but I'm, I'm just kidding. Actually, my wife told me this story happened. I wasn't even there. But the point is, is there, like you're going, oh, oh. But then what's funny is you're going, where, where'd this come? Where'd you hear this? And he goes, dad, Dick's Sporting Goods my favorite store. Now all of a sudden you're like, thank the good Lord. You know what I mean? Because words have power, words have emotions. Now here's how this has to do with the relationship with our parents. Okay, if our parents are in us and we are our parents, here's the problem with that, is that there becomes unbelievable similarities. And with similarities come conflict. And with conflict comes words. And with those words, what happens is, Rather than trying to lift up and solve, what happens? We become attacking. We become degrading, right? All of a sudden, we're using words. We're saying things. Think about this. To our parents that God calls us to honor, and here's the crazy part, is once you've said something that maybe was a pressing down, maybe you're, you're spewing some venom about something that, yeah, they were wrong. Okay, we're going to get into that in a minute. Like, no parent is right all the time. Oh, my dang. But when you're using your words, here's the problem with words. You can't ever unhear something that you've heard. See, that sticks with you. See, I, and again, 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 I think that's why the parent-kid relationship is so hard. I think most likely, if you think back to your greatest hurt or pain with your parents, most likely words were involved. And most likely those words stuck with you. Uh, seriously, other statistics show that, look, negative talk from parents affects kids to a great, great degree. Do you understand that? Like, under, realize, like, like, there's a study that I read that if a, a parent is negative about a kid's body, that 
kid will go through their life with low self-confidence about their body. Our parents are in us and we are becoming either like our parents or something else. And that's what I want to introduce you to is the something else. Because what God says is that we should be wise with our words. What God says is, hey, instead of using our words to cut down, hey, maybe we should use them to build up. Scripture puts it this way in Ephesians 4, 29. It says this, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Now think about that. Okay, what Bible's telling us is, look, let's use our words in such a way that's helpful for building others up. What that means, maybe you're a parent and you have kids. Listen to me, maybe you need to change your language. Maybe you need to change how you talk to your kids. Okay, but, but if you're here and you have a parent, which we all agree we all do, listen to me, the call is to honor them and you do that with your words. Now again, again, what does honor mean? Well, the best definition I've found for honor is simply this, is it's a lifting up of your relationship to a God glorifying level. Think about that. It's a lifting up of the relationship. Okay, so think about now, put this together, okay? So if our words are supposed to be used in a way to lift others up, okay, what words are we supposed to use? Okay, if we're going to, if God's going to say, hey, honor your parents, here's what he's saying. Lift them up with your words. Here's what he's saying. Try to take that relationship to a God glorifying level. What he's saying is use your words to build the relationship, not to tear it down. And so what does that look like? Very practically, listen to me. I think maybe it starts with a thank you. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a text. Maybe it's you taking them out. Just to say, hey, thank you. And again, not that they're perfect, but even the things that you don't do, like go, come back to me and smoking. Like, hey, dad, thanks. Like, that's, that's stunk. I'm not going to lie. That, I, I hated you smoking. But because of that, I don't smoke. Maybe it wasn't smoking with you. Maybe it was language. Maybe it was what they did with their finances. Again, again, again. See, our parents are in us. It's just, it's just how it is. And so I think sometimes, maybe it starts with a, Thank you. Maybe it starts with asking for advice. Again, see, what happens as we get older and we become parents or, or we get our own house is, is that w there's something in us that I think we feel like we're weak or we're less if we, if we go to our parents and ask for help. I'm telling you, one of the most honoring things you can do is if maybe you're having a problem with a kid. Well, well if... if we are in our parents and our parents are in us, like you're in your kid. And so maybe you should go ask your mom and dad, hey, how'd you handle me when I probably did some of this stuff or, or I don't know how to handle him because I keep freaking out. Like how, how, it's, it's amazing the wisdom that they will give. Maybe you're wanting to take off and run and you're just feeling like life's collapsing on you and you're like, I'm ready to ditch this. I'm ready to go. And maybe you come from a divorced family. Man, a great thought would be, hey, why don't you go back to that mom or that dad that did leave and say, I'm wanting to do what you did. Do you regret it? Should I stay and fight? Now, again, 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 their answers might not be what you want to hear, but I'm telling you, there might be some wisdom there, right? I'm, I'm telling you, maybe... Maybe it's asking them, how can I help? Maybe, maybe your parent, you see them where they're, they're in a situation that they shouldn't be in. And you're having to maybe babysit them in a way you shouldn't. Like the, a, a kid shouldn't be babysitting a parent, but maybe, man, it's just how can I help? You know, what can I do for you? I'm telling you, these are ways that we can build up with our words. Now, no, hang tight because I want to be sensitive. All right, because there are some parents that you just need to kind of put in that glass box and, and, and they, because it's poison. Okay, and what do you do? Because surely you're like, well, I'm not gonna say thank you. Surely not take them out there. Like, what, what do you do? And here would be my best advice. As I've thought through this, I'm not, here's, here's my best advice. Simply this, if you don't have anything nice to say, 
don't say anything at all. See, the command is not, hey, use these words to build up for the people you like. No, that's not what Scripture says. He says, no, 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 let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. So if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And you go, well, well if someone asked me about my mom and dad, then here's what I would say, okay? Salute the uniform. It's kind of like an army thing. You know, like you, you don't need to like them. You don't need to have to say a good thing about them. You're like, you know what? I have a mom and a dad, and I got taught a lot of things. And look, I'm thankful I had a mom and dad, but I just don't choose to live a lifestyle like them. Does that make sense? But see how there's a, there's a softness. There's a lifting up. Remember, we're to honor our parents. Lift them up. That's the command. And we do that with our words, with our words. And then the second thing we do it, we do it with love. Love. Now, here's what's fascinating. Okay, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because if you were here last week, we spent a lot of time on this word agape. Okay, it's the Greek word for love. Okay, and the idea here is that love, at least in this context that I want to talk about, is a self sacrificing, a choosing of love. And I think one of the greatest things you can do in your relationship with your parents is choose to love them. Now, again, 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 that's countercultural. Right? Because for us, we view love as infatuation. Again, if you go back to my relationship with my wife, okay, like I met her and two weeks later I told her I love her, okay, while rubbing her feet with lotion. Okay, that's a whole other story. I do not suggest you tell, date a girl and in two weeks be like, I love you, okay? Like that, that's a, it was, I'm shocked she married me, okay? But the point is, is that really is. Love, but the reality is that the Bible defines love very, very different than an emotion you're feeling in a moment. Okay, biblically, this, this idea of love is simply this. 1 Corinthians 13, it says this. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Hello. Watch this. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Watch this. Love never fails. Now, hang tight because that's our wedding verse, right? Like we love this text in a wedding, right? But, but apply this to mom and dad, right? Like patience. Again, again, you're going, wait, I don't, I, patience. Kindness, love keeps no record of wrongs, but hold on, hold on, hold on, my therapist says I'm supposed to dive into those wrongs and really dig up those wrongs and actually blame mom and dad because I am who I am because of their wrongs. Okay, hang I, I'm not saying we shouldn't deal with those things, but what I'm saying is, is we should deal with them with love where we're looking at the wrongs to make it right, to get on with our lives and heal. And that's the thing is you gotta go, why would God call us to this? Right, like why would God call us to say, we're gonna honor them with love? Like even if they've, they've abandoned you, even if there's been abuse, like what, like that, you go, I don't, I don't understand, like why? Well, because biblically when we usher in love, we usher in God himself. That's why 1 Peter 4, 8, it says this, love covers a multitude of sin. Do you understand that? That it's possible to heal. That it's possible to not have pain anymore. Do you understand that it's possible that all the wrongs that your parents have done to you, Maybe you're a parent and all the wrongs you've done to your kid and now your kids won't even talk to you anymore. Do you realize that if we usher in love, understand that it starts to cover, it starts to shift, it starts to change things. And some of us are going, man, I need a miracle with my family, especially my parents. Then here's the deal, love. Because love's the only shot to have the cover. Now again, let me be clear. Love does not mean you just do whatever they say and let them walk all over you. Okay, love does not mean you become a doormat for them to take advantage of you. Love does not mean you let an abusive parent back into your life. But what love does, when done correctly, is it starts to usher in God's presence. Love might look like 
you taking the keys from your parent because they've drank too much alcohol or they're becoming an alcoholic. Love might look like you stepping in to give some wisdom and advice on some finances because they're in a tailspin and they can't get them where they're themselves out. Love might be setting boundaries with your parents, with your family for a time. Listen to me, love is not this passive thing. Love is I'm going to choose to lift you up even though you've pressed me down. That's what love is. I know we push back and we go, oh, this is so difficult. But again, the promise, what's the promise? That we honor our parents, we're going to live long. God's going to smile. Understand, God's not saying do this just because these are good ideas. He's saying do this because, man, there's promises to be had and love covers a multitude of sins. And, and so what are we going to do? How are we going to honor our parents? Number one, we're going to do it with our words, okay? Number one, we're going to do it with our words. Number two is then we're going to do it with our love. We're going to love. We're going to choose to do the hard thing and lift them up. And then finally, if you can do your words, if you can do love, then the last thing I'd say is number three is we honor them with forgiveness. We forgive. Now hang on, because, because nobody showed up here and, and you're going, yeah, oh yeah, I walked in here, yes, I just want to forgive, okay? Nobody wants to forgive. Again, just, just it's, it's just not, it, forgiveness, like true forgiveness is difficult. In fact, I, I'm even starting to wonder, is it even human nature to forgive? Because I find it true in my life, I just want to hold on. You know, again, again, come into just my relationship with my boys. Right? Like we can giggle and laugh about it. Like I gave him the little finger. You know what I mean? But the reality is, is I was shouting. Reality is that I was over the top. And, and I started making those threats like, you're grounded for when? Forever. Right? Like the other day, I was like, you, you can't use the air. But they turned the AirPods up too loud. And, and, they lost, and I'm like, you lost that privilege till you're 12. Right? To where it's like, oh, for two years and one small. You know? And reality is, I have to say sorry. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, like I have to, if I want to value my kids, right? I mean, hey, son, look at, look at, like, I'm sorry. Would you come over here and hug me? And here's what comes out of their mouth sometimes. No. To which I'm like, you little sucker. You know, but I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The reality is, is it's hard to forgive. But again, that's our call. It really is. We're again coming to scriptures. Where Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says this, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you. Okay, so understand what Scripture is doing is he's saying, Hey, you and me, as far as life depends on us, what we can control, what we can handle, meaning our efforts and our emotions. Okay, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, hang on, because if I could delete any verse out of scripture, it would probably be this one. Okay, I know you're like, well, you're a pastor. You can't say that. No, I can because I, this is hard because what he's saying is in my attitude and in my effort, as far as I'm concerned, I need to make the effort. I need to have the attitude where I'm going to live at peace, even with people that have hurt me and wronged me. And I need to live in forgiveness. And again, we push back and we go, but I don't, man, that's really tough. Why would God ask that of this? And watch this, keep reading because this gets so good. The reason why is because this ushers in the power and presence of God. Watch this. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Watch this. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, watch this. Instead of taking revenge, okay? If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Watch this. Watch this. If you repay evil with kindness, watch this. Think about your hurt. Think about your pain. Think about your parents, and good and in bad. If you do to them what they didn't do to you, watch this. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. 
And that's when we all go, yes, yes, get him, Chris, get him. I'm going to kill him with kindness. Kill him with kindness. I'm going to show him how good of a kid I became in spite of them. I was going to rub that salt in their womb. It's going to heap coals. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on. That's not what scripture's talking about. See, again, again, see, we, we let our emotions dictate, oh my gosh, so much. But as far as I can tell, this text, the only other time in the Bible that a coal touches someone, it's recorded in Isaiah chapter 6, where scripture says that Isaiah sees his sinfulness in front of God. And then what happens is God comes after him with a burning coal and touches him with it. And scripture says at that moment, once God comes after Isaiah, God touches him with the coal, okay? Like it says in that moment, the moment the hot coal touches him, it says, boom, in a moment, all is forgiven. In a moment, he's made right before God. In a moment, his unclean lips become healed. And what God, I believe, is telling you and me is that if we would act this way, in all of our relationships, especially with our parents, it's not just one coal that's going to touch the one thing that they did to heal you of the one moment. No, no, no. He says doing this is going to heap a pile of coals on that relationship. Meaning, 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 don't miss this, is that God's very presence is going to be multiplied over that thing, that hurt, that pain, and somehow, and in some way, and I know you can't see how it's going to happen. You can't see how it's going to turn for the good, but God promises that he will work all things for the good for those that love him and are called to his purpose, meaning we offer forgiveness. And I know, I know, I know, I know you go home, but they did. Hold on, hold on. I know they did. And here's what I know about parents. They know they did too. Do you understand your parents live with regrets? Do you understand I've never talked to a parent that was like nailed it, slam dunk, wouldn't change a thing. Every parent has regrets. Every parent knows they've hurt their kids. And kids, what do our parents need? Do they need you pointing out now that you're an adult how you're doing it better? No, what they need is the power and the presence of God in their life, knowing there's grace. You understand, folks, what is grace? Grace is God's power in our weakness. Grace is God giving us not just mercy, but giving us more, building a better life, something more than if we had never screwed up to begin with. That's what they need. And I'm telling you, we have the power as their children to give them the greatest gift in the world, forgiveness, because what that does is ushers in grace. It ushers in Jesus' presence, and that's what our parents need. What they need is Jesus. What you need is Jesus. And what he's saying is that if we're gonna, if we'd honor God, imagine, imagine if we just honored our parents with our words. We stopped cutting them down, but you know where we said, we're gonna salute the universe, at the very least say nothing at all. Then imagine if we just love, we would love, we, we'd, we'd sacrifice, choose to love them. And then imagine, imagine if we forgave, what, what would happen? What could God do if we heaped these coals on these things that have hurt us for so long? What happens? What could happen is what happens is God does what he's always done and what the gospel has always promised that he brings dead things back to life. See, understand the gospel, Jesus coming, Jesus dying for our sins, and then Jesus picking his life back up. This means that's what Jesus wants to do in every relationship, in every corner of your life. That's why this is so powerful. And the reason as Christians we should live this way is because we believe, we believe dead things come back to life. And I know mom and dad hurt you. I get get that. But he brings dead things back to life. To life. I know, well, but my dad abandoned me and he's not even in my life anymore. I get it, I get it. But he could bring dead things back to life. But I want to bury him and actually keep him dead because I, I don't want them in my life. Listen, he takes dead things and brings them back to life. Listen to me, our hope, our hope is not in our circumstances. Our hope is in an empty tomb. And if you can do it with Jesus, you can do it with your family. If you can do it with Jesus, you can do it with your kids. If you can do it with Jesus, you can do it with 
our parents. But as far as it is, depending on you and me, as far as possible, let's live at peace with everyone. Because the reality is, whether you want to believe it or not, your parents are in you. And you are a part of your parents. There's no getting out of that. And so we have two options today. Let the hurt continue. Let the unforgiveness for continue. Or, or, you can stare into an empty tomb and trust God. Trust Him. Just enough to honor. Trust Him. Just enough to obey. Trust Him that He takes dead things and brings them back to life. So bow your heads and pray. Jesus, I know that what we talked about today is difficult for many people. But God, that's why we trust your word. That you bring up and you touch the untouched parts of our hearts. And God, I pray for every single person that is listening under the sound of my voice. God, we all have parents. We all have hurt and pain from parents. God, some worse than others. But Jesus, what we need you to do is to do your great work in us, as far as it depends on us. And God, what we need is your heaping coals on us, your forgiveness, your grace on us. And so God, I pray that, that we have soft hearts. And God, the things we mirror, God, I, I thank you that we have role models and there are people that they can mirror their life. For people that are going, man, I'm, I'm opposite of what my parents were. Man, I, I, I pray that they somehow find thankfulness that they've learned and grown and they haven't succumbed to the same lifestyle. And then I pray for those of hard hearts. God, that your spirit, Jesus, would soften them enough, just enough, to take a next step in this. God, that they would offer forgiveness. God, that they would love, that they would honor with their words. God, there would be, there'd be moments. Again, not that we just let toxicity back into our lives, God, but, 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 but. As far as it depends on us, we live at peace. Not in pain, peace with even our parents. Jesus, I pray that you do a mighty work and that you heal you're living, and you're active in our hearts and minds. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, guys. I love you, love you, love you, and I love teaching this book. And if you learned anything or you need anything, listen to me. Connect with us. You can email info at unitecommunitychurch.com. You can download our app anywhere you download apps. Just search Unite Community Church on your apps store. And, uh, and uh, me or another pastor will reach out to you. Man, I love, love, love you guys. We'll see you next week as we wrap up this series, Multiply.